Now we'll turn our attention to cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a progressive degenerative disease of the liver. Liver cells are damaged and replaced by fibrous connective scar tissue. As a result of the damage, the liver is unable to carry out its functions. Normally, the liver produces bile, which facilitates the digestion of fats, converts glucose to glycogen, stores glycogen, which is needed for energy, synthesizes albumin, amino acids, globulins, prothrombin, and fibrinogen, converts ammonia to urea, stores fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, plus vitamin B12, copper, and iron, and forms lipoproteins, phospholipids, and cholesterol. A major cause of cirrhosis is chronic alcoholism. Alcohol-related cirrhosis is called Leonax cirrhosis. Older clients who chronically ingest large amounts of alcohol have an increased risk of developing Leonax cirrhosis. Other types of cirrhosis are biliary cirrhosis, which is caused by chronic biliary obstruction, post-necrotic cirrhosis, which can be caused by acute viral hepatitis, drugs or environmental toxins, and cardiac cirrhosis, which is a complication of right-sided congestive heart failure or chronic constrictive pericarditis. What are the major signs and symptoms of cirrhosis? Abdominal pain, enlarged liver, enlarged spleen, anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, indigestion, anemia, jaundice, and itching, ascites, kaput medusa, liver flap or hepatic tremor, constipation or diarrhea, dark urine, hypoglycemia, varices or hemorrhoids, spider angiomas, and a fruity or musty breath odor. The diagnosis of cirrhosis is based on these laboratory studies and diagnostic procedures. Liver function laboratory studies, serum ammonia levels, CBC and platelet count, coagulation studies, prothrombin time, serum electrolytes, MRI, CT scan, radioisotopic liver scan, and liver biopsy. Cirrhosis is treated non-surgically and surgically because diet as well as fluid and alcohol restriction are important aspects of non-surgical treatment the client may benefit from instructions from a dietitian and a nurse the dietitian can make suggestions to help the client to still enjoy food while remaining comfortable while the nurse can talk about the importance of fluid and vitamin intake and the need to avoid alcohol medications are also used to treat cirrhosis Diuretics help eliminate excess fluid, which improves the client's respiratory and cardiac function. Low sodium antacids help control chronic dyspepsia. Vitamins and nutritional supplements are also useful. However, remember that clients who have liver impairment, especially elderly clients, must avoid drugs known to cause hepatotoxicity. The liver metabolizes most drugs. A damaged liver cannot metabolize drugs properly, causing adverse drug effects. Clients with liver damage should avoid sedative and opiates. Other interventions include weighing the client every day, recording intake and output, monitoring electrolytes, measuring the client's abdominal girth, and providing opportunities for adequate rest. A paracentesis should be performed when diet and diuretic therapy fail to control the ascites, and the client develops dyspnea. During a paracentesis, the physician inserts a trocar into the client's abdomen to drain the acidic fluid that has collected in the peritoneal cavity. To prepare the client for a paracentesis, assist him to a sitting position on the side of the bed or in a chair with his legs and feet dependent. If the client is unable to assume that position, help him into an upright sitting position in bed. Ascites fluid should be removed slowly. Rapid removal can cause hypovolemia and precipitate shock. When the procedure is completed, document the drainage on the client's intake and output record and send specimens of the fluid to the laboratory for analysis. Keep the client on bed rest until vital signs are stable. Some clients with severe ascites may require surgery. A Levine shunt continually moves ascites fluid from the abdominal cavity into the superior vena cava. Following surgery, it is important to measure abdominal girth and intake and output, weigh the client daily and assess for bleeding, congestive heart failure, and peritonitis. Clients who have liver cirrhosis face the possibility of many dangerous complications. They include portal hypertension, esophageal varices, gastrointestinal hemorrhage, splenomegaly, anemia, hepatic encephalopathy, and hepatic coma. 
Portal hypertension is caused by a backup of blood into the portal system. As you can see, the portal system contains the gastric veins, mesenteric vein from the intestines, splenic vein, and portal vein. These veins drain through the liver and out of the hepatic veins into the superior vena cava. When the liver is scarred due to cirrhosis, blood backs up into the portal system causing congestion, increased fluid pressure, and portal hypertension. Unless portal hypertension is surgically corrected, the client can develop esophageal varices due to congestion and dilation of the esophageal veins. These varices can rupture, causing a massive, life-threatening hemorrhage. It is vital to take every measure to prevent bleeding. Have the client eat a soft, fiber-free diet and take stool softeners to prevent straining to defecate. Also, advise the client to avoid products containing aspirin, which reduces clotting time. Injection sclerotherapy may be performed to sclerose bleeding esophageal varices. When the client is at severe risk for hemorrhage, the physician may insert a multi-lumen balloon tube, such as a Sangstake and Blakemore tube or a Minnesota tube. The tube exerts pressure on the bleeding varices, thus controlling the hemorrhage. Let's say your client has just had a Sangstake and Blakemore tube inserted. During your frequent assessment of the client's airway, your client reports dyspnea. What do you do? When a client reports or exhibits dyspnea or respiratory distress, you should deflate the balloon immediately. The inflated portion of the tube might have been pulled up into the oropharynx. Shunting surgeries provide a last resort for clients who have bleeding esophageal varices. During a splenorenal shunt, the splen is removed and the splenic vein is anastomosed to the left renal vein. A porticaval shunt diverts blood from the portal vein into the inferior vena cava. During a mesocaval shunt, the superior mesenteric vein is anastomosed to the inferior vena cava. A high mortality rate is associated with these surgeries because clients may have coagulation problems. They might be malnourished or prone to infection, and they might have a low tolerance for anesthesia. Hepatic encephalopathy represents the end stage of cirrhosis and hepatic failure. This condition is characterized by neurological symptoms such as a reduced level of consciousness, impaired thinking, and ultimately coma due to the accumulation of ammonia and other toxic metabolites in the blood. Cephalac, trade name lactulose, is administered to the client to reduce serum ammonia levels.